Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and WNST.net. Uh, we are back live in the studio doing our thing, and lo and behold, let's see, uh, Orioles, baseball, all in disgrace and a mess there that we're going to be talking about. Obviously, the Ravens not playing any football and some combine around the corner, but the living, breathing, natural animal of this season NASCAR, of course. Luke Jones here to talk about that. No, no, no. The Maryland Terrapins. The number <laughs> nine Maryland Terrapins who can't seem to lose, Luke Jones. I mean, you and I have not talked about all nine of their victories here. And, uh, you know, back and back and back. And Michigan State and Nebraska. And we go back to the Seton Hall losses and the Penn State field bads and all of that stuff. But, boy, the last couple of weeks we've been apart. The Terps have been pretty good despite... Uh, whatever the malign part of being a top 10 team that can't seem to lose in the Big Ten, not even on the road in East Lansing, the Terps have been kicked around plenty. Maybe it's time to praise them, for at least for a little while, huh? Yeah, I agree with you. And you know very well from our conversations over the last couple of years on the air and off that I haven't been a very big believer in Mark Turgeon. And it's nothing personal. It's just I, I think the results have kind of, they speak for themselves. There, there hasn't, hasn't been a whole lot to write home about, but I think you, you look at what this team has been able to do in a very competitive Big Ten. Now, you can look at it through different perspectives. You can look at it and say, well, uh, they're currently projected to have, I think, I, I, most of the bracketologists I've seen have them 11 teams going to the NCAA tournament, uh, lots of competition. Or is it parody? Is it mediocrity? Yeah, you, you always get into that. And, and by the way, that's not a Big Ten thing. That's college basketball. Exactly, thing. yeah. I mean, you, San Diego well, State's the best team. In the, okay, okay. Right. I okay. Mean, you, you have Baylor. <laughs> and I love San Diego State. <laughs> uh, I mean, look at, look at the, the current top 25. You know, we'll have a new week. But uh, going into this week, it was Baylor and Gonzaga, Kansas. Okay, Gonzaga, Kansas, I get that. San Diego State, really? <laughs> and then Louisville and Dayton, I mean, Florida State, and then you, know, you get to Maryland at being nice. Dude, it's so almost going... fun to some degree because when the pool card comes out in a couple of weeks, like, you know, San Diego State is a two seed or something. It's going to be crazy, right? It, it really is. It's easy to pick against them the first time they see, like, an ACC team, right? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. But I think bringing it back to Maryland, look. Is this a perfect team? No. Do they still drive you nuts? Absolutely yes. I mean, look at the final three minutes of the first half. And let's face it, the first, I don't know, 13 minutes of the second half in Michigan State. And it was incredibly frustrating. I mean, this was a team that looked like they had a chance to, to kind of run away and hide uh, in that first half against Michigan State. They're up 15 points. Uh, late in the first half, and a 7-0 run makes it an eight-point game. And then Maryland came out and kind of did what Maryland teams seem to be pretty prone to do, and that's sleepwalk for uh, a good portion uh, of the second half and turn what was a pretty comfortable lead into a deficit. But then you saw what they did over the final few minutes, and specifically Anthony Cowan, and you just have to be really, really impressed They've defended well for a while now. Uh, I think that part has been pretty consistent for them, save for a couple performances here and there over the last couple months. But, uh, I mean, they just they, pl they played with uh, a championship kind of medal at, at the end of that game on Saturday night. And, I, I mean, it looked really bleak. And then they score the final 14 points of the game. Anthony Cowan scores the final 11 points of the game. And I, I don't know. I, I mean... I, I still see this team having <laughs> the vul enough vulnerability that they could lose in the second round of the NCAA tournament, and, and I wouldn't be shocked. But at the same time, when you do look at the landscape of college basketball, there isn't that dominant team. There aren't those dominant teams at the very top. We've seen so much movement, uh, not just the top five and top ten, but the top 25. <laughs> I mean, look at Michigan State, where they were not that terribly long ago, and then they're out of the top 25. It just speaks to how crazy this college basketball season has been. But I do think you look at this team's talent, you look at what they've been able to do in the Big Ten, uh, which has been a very competitive uh, environment, especially trying to win games on the road, and Maryland's been able to do that. 
then I'm not going to sit here and say they can't go to the Final Four uh, and be in that conversation. Uh, am I betting on it? Probably not, in the same way that I'm probably not betting on any team in college basketball this year. But when you do look at the body of work and what they've been able to do, how they've been able to win some games on the road in the Big Ten after that was a big knock on them earlier in the season, uh, I think you can absolutely make the argument. And I think what we're seeing is a lot of fun. And hey, 21 and 4, 11 and 3 in the conference, you have to give credit there. And Mark Turgeon give, deserves credit. And uh, this basketball team deserves credit, and uh, certainly with the way that they finished out Saturday night's game uh, in East Lansing, you have to give them a lot of credit because even if this isn't the best Michigan State team, you know how difficult it is to win in that environment, and they got the job done. Well, they get behind, right? You feel the crowd breathing down on them, and it feels like we've seen this movie before, right? Yeah. Like My wife and I went out, full disclosure, these game times are weird, right? Saturday at 6 p.m. When did the Terps weird. play at Saturday at 6 p.m. in the AC? Like, never. It was dinner time in the South. They don't do that. North Carolina, they break for dinner is what they do at 6 o'clock. But <laughs> we want to call it supper down there. <laughs> they call it supper. That's right. And there's always sweet tea and biscuits. There you go. And I, there you I, go. There's no doubt about that. But <laughs> I, I was uh, over at Roos Chris on Saturday doing a little Valentine's thing. My wife was very cold out. We went for a little walk through the harbor, something they say you can't do, you know. Can't walk through the streets of Baltimore, right? But... Uh, I do it every day of my life. Um, we love Baltimore. By the way, Baltimore Positive's rocking this week with a whole bunch of great stuff with Mary Miller, Mary Washington. We've now had six or maybe seven mayoral candidates, so make sure you're checking that out. We're back at State Fair again, uh, so make sure you check that out. Baltimore Positive, now 140 episodes deep. But I digress. Go over to Roots Chris. I'm enjoying a Valentine's meal, you know, I got my thing going on, we're in the bar, we scored seats, the place was packed, it was jumping, fans were there, had a table full of dudes that looked like basketball players, they could be all six foot eight, six foot ten, we're all watching the game, we're all, you know, I, I hear them at the other table, I'm you know, sort of cutting into my, uh, my bread and buttering my thing, that they're down in the turps, and what are they going to do, I think one of them, or a couple of them knew some of the Mount St. Joe kids, because they talk like that, and before you know it, here comes Cowan hitting the shot, right? And then here comes Cowan hitting another shot. Now it's five, and, like, I'm fist-bumping these guys, and I'm like, put it away. They're going to win in East Lansing. Dude, they're not going to win in East Lansing a whole lot, right? I mean, maybe Izzo goes away, and they're not the Duke of the division and all that stuff, but, and you know, you don't get to play everywhere every year anymore in these conferences. But, you know, winning in East Lansing when you're in the Big Ten you know, that's going to Cameron and winning no matter when you do it. And that Michigan State team, I'll say this. Number one, you know, 10 weeks ago, it feels like a long time ago. I don't know that I want them on my dance card next month. I really don't. I mean, I uh, teams with talent, teams with veteran talent that sort of sleepwalk during February, to me, they're very, very dangerous in March. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. But I think that's where you are so encouraged with what Maryland was able to do. I mean, let's, let's look at this game. I mean, it really was kind of the tale of three different games. I mean, you look at what Maryland did over the first 17 minutes in the first half. I remember Dante Scott hits that three, and they're up 15, and you're thinking, wow, I mean, this is really impressive. They've defended well, and, and they're scoring points, hitting shots. They made so many free throws in the first half. They, they rebounded uh, at such a high clip. And then what happens? They start Michigan playing State, like garbage. Michigan State goes on the 7-0 run to close the first half. And when, from the time that, that Dante Scott hits that three with, I think it was 2.59 to go, three minutes to go in the first half, Maryland scored 14 points from that point until, I think, three minutes to go. They had scored 14 points essentially over an entire half of basketball. Well, it's a good thing they rebound well because they're very droughty, right? They they really get, they get cold, oh. and and yeah. and a lot of times they start cold. I mean, early in the year, now that you know, we'd say the, the Michigan State game, we'd say they got out in front on that game on the road, as you're going to need to do. They needed every inch of what they had early in the game, but they they, they really they they can get very very cold and. And I guess that's why you need Cowan there and hope that you're within three or four or six like they were the other day in East Lansing. But, you know, if they get down by a lot, I I'm worried about their ability to shoot well for long stretches to get yeah, back uh, in a game. Right, right. And, uh, I mean, again, that, this is something that a lot of teams deal with. Uh, I mean, even teams that we're talking about in the top 15 right now, I mean, I, I don't think Maryland's flaws are incredibly unique to them. 
uh, compared to some of the flaws that the other top 10, top 15 teams have. It's just, uh, again, it's just the reality of college basketball this year. They have three really good but, players, and, and uh, you know, and, and the difference between their roster and Michigan State is, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's a razor's edge for all of these programs, I think, right? Nobody's got five superstars, and nobody keeps them four years. That's just where we are. Right, right. And, and you look at Maryland. I mean, certainly, I mean, Jalen Smith, I, I think over the course of 40 minutes, he's, I mean, he's their best player. He's going to be uh, a first-round pick or projected to be. You know, we'll see where that winds up as far as his status. But uh, to your point, at, at the end of the game, and this, is, this really applies at every level of basketball, you, you need to have the ball. You need a guard that is comfortable having the ball in their hand, uh, whether they're going to take a big shot, uh, whether they're going to be able to create for someone else, or it's just it's on them. And the one thing about Anthony Cowan, and look, look at that game, how he played in the first half and getting to the free throw line, and then the second half. I mean, you forgot he was even out there for for almost the entire second half. I mean, he just he didn't make any shots. He he just wasn't doing a whole lot. And then you look at what happened at the end of that game. Jalen Smith hits the three uh, with with what three oh eight to go. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're in position. But, I mean, Cowan just was enormous. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, what he was able to do uh, over those final two and a half minutes, a three-pointer, next possession, three-pointer, next possession, three-pointer, then two free throws to ice it with under 10 seconds to go. I mean, he can be very inconsistent. He can be maddening in that inconsistency. But uh, one thing I'll say about Anthony Cowan, uh, having watched him now for for a few years, he's not afraid at the end of games typically, and really it's... mellow, trembly, right? Kind of, sort of, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. Or maybe uh, Vasquez. I mean, I mean they, they, look this this franchise here over twenty five years. We can go through a number of guys that weren't afraid to take a shot and hit some big shot, also miss Steve some big Blake. shots, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to have that guy. I mean, that's like what I said. I mean, as great as it is to have a big that can do the things inside the paint. I mean, Jalen Smith can knock down some outside shots as well, but certainly you look at him from, from an inside scoring and rebounding capacity, uh, shot-blocking ability. But at the end of the game, especially at the college level, but like I said, I think this kind of applies uh, at any level of basketball. You need to have the, uh, a guard who's comfortable having the ball in their hand uh, in crunch time, whether it's to take the big shot yourself or – you know, uh, to drive to the basket, you know, to draw a foul, get to the free throw line, whatever it is, you need to have someone who that moment isn't too big for them. And Anthony Cowan, even though there, you can point to some examples where he's taken some ill-advised shots at the end of games and you can kind of scratch your head and say, what was he thinking? He's not afraid. Uh, and he certainly had onions at the end of that game, uh, the way that he was at, you know, not afraid to take a big shot and, and drill it. So... You need that, and they're going to need the best version of Anthony Cowan, the best version of Jalen Smith. Uh, I think you look uh, at how they profile, if they can uh, get a little more consistency from Eric Ayala, who has shot the ball better, although not necessarily the best example of that Saturday night, but uh, of recent, you know, recent games, he, he shot the ball a little bit better than he has for most of the season, uh, and certainly having... Wiggins come off the bench and give them some scoring. If they can get those things consistently, then this team can go to the Final Four. But at the same time, knowing that you have to be consistent and it comes down to draw the, the draw, I mean, you're, you're at the mercy of how uh, the, the seeding's going to go. Uh, Maryland, you know, they're, they're certainly capable of being beaten uh, if they don't come out and play uh, their best version of how they were able to play. Well, it's so. almost like the Ravens a little bit at the end. Like, please lose to the Browns or somebody here in the middle <laughs> because, you know, yeah. I do not want to see them on some 14-game winning streak. But all that being said, the Big Ten tournament looms, you know, that whole weekend thing around the corner. Uh, still some road trips out to Ohio State next week, out to Michigan, up to Rutgers before it's all over with. And I know you and I are going to have the Michigan State game later in the month. Uh, the, the Wolverines come in to end the whole thing on the 8th of March still a couple of pretty big home games after this Northwestern thing, that, that, that there's room on the bandwagon, right? I mean, and if you're going to get bandwagoned up, 
I mean, look, you're 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 pushing 35, 40 years of age. How many times have the have the Terps been a top ten team after Valentine's Day to give you the notion that they're gonna you know punch a two or a three on a pool card next month? That hasn't happened a whole lot around here. Matter of fact, right around now, in the old days of Gary and Lefty and certainly Turgeon, they'll lose three out of the next six, take a facer in the first Big Ten game, and wind up pulling a four seed or a five seed after. You know, flashing this around Valentine's Day. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. and again, when you look at how difficult it's been winning on the road in the Big Ten, that's why what they did Saturday is so exciting because it's been really difficult. That's the game win. you're supposed to lose. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I think I believe Michigan State was a seven point favorite, despite the fact that Maryland was ninth and, and Michigan State wasn't ranked. That just shows you how tough it is to win in that environment and how much respect. Uh, the bookies still have for, for Michigan State and maybe still some questions about Maryland. But uh, I think certainly the opportunity is there for this team to you know, finish strong, have a good showing in the Big Ten tournament. <laughs> At the end of the day, I, I still don't know how much people really care about the Big Ten tournament in the same way that you could say the same thing about the ACC tournament. <laughs> when you look at the fact that, hey, the national championship team didn't win the ACC tournament, if you recall, uh, in 2002. So uh, I think it's all about what they do in the big dance. Uh, certainly they're going to be in. They're going to have a high-profile seed. Uh, I, the most recent bracketology kind of had them uh, on the two line before Saturday. So, I mean, that, there's a chance for them to, to continue to move up. But they've got some challenges here uh, over the next couple weeks before they get, get into uh, the Big Ten tournament. And we'll see how it plays out. But, uh, again, I, I think at this point in time, to your point, as much as there's been apathy, disenchantment, frustration, whatever, however you want to describe the Mark Turgeon era, uh, even when you, you look back longingly at the Gary Williams years and, and Lefty Drizel, you know, going way back, it's still rare territory for Maryland to be a, a top five or top ten caliber team. Not saying it hasn't happened, but it's not as though they were a top ten team every single year with, uh, under Gary Williams. So. That's where, if you are someone who's been a little more of a Mark Turgeon hater or a doubter or just not a, a big believer, that's where it, I think it is time to embrace this team because when you look at where they are, you look at the body of work, look, I'm not saying that they're going to win it or they're definitely going to the Final Four, but I think you just look around at the landscape of college basketball and you kind of say, why, why not the Terps? Why, why not them? And why are you saying all the, the, these other teams are, are that much better? So that's where it's a lot of fun. And, you know, it, it's even strange just looking at the Big Ten from a standpoint of how about the fact that Penn State's in second place. I mean, who would have thought that uh, when Maryland lost to Penn State a little bit earlier in the season? And uh, at the time, that looked like such a bad loss. And now you look at it and say, eh, not so bad. Uh, I mean, Penn State's, I mean, this is the best Penn State team I've ever seen on the hardwood. So, Definitely strange. Yeah, I got to get Dick Girardi on this week. I, uh, you know, I'm going to add him to the list, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's definitely uh, it's uncharted territory for them. It's territory that the Terps, you know, it's been rare, uh, not not uncharted for Maryland, but rare. Uh, so uh, it's maybe fun. the Terps can avenge that in the Big Ten tournament, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, and it, it's funny. I, actually, one of my best friends uh, is a big big Penn State fan, uh, basketball as well as football, and. He, he, he pointed out to me how strange it is to look uh, at the top of the Big Ten standings and see Maryland and Penn State. You certainly you don't see that in football with Maryland, and you're not used to seeing that with Penn State in basketball. So uh, definitely strange, but uh, I think it'd be fun to see those two teams run into each other uh, in March in the Big Ten tournament. But Maryland, still some work to do here. And, hey, uh, Penn State uh, right on their heels, just one game behind. And uh, as we mentioned, they have that head-to-head -head, uh, advantage beating them earlier in the season. So be a lot of fun, but I think at this point, the doubts, the the, you know, the the snarkiness about Mark Turge and all of that, which I've been as guilty of that as, as anyone at times uh, in recent years, but uh, this is a good basketball team, and I think that there's definitely a potential for them to make a run, but, uh, and this is the case with anyone. Uh, I mean, let's not let's remember Virginia a couple years ago. Uh, you know, even the best team in the country, even a number one seed, uh, can be vulnerable uh, in the wrong draw. So beware, uh, UMBC on a dark night. Who's <laughs> exactly, exactly? <laughs> but uh, it, from that standpoint, 
have fun with this. Uh, I think at this point it's okay to start buying into this. And, hey, if Maryland gets knocked out in the first weekend, then you can send me a nasty email and say, Luke, you told me to buy in. But uh, I think uh, th- this is – What the hell else are you going to do? You can't even watch the games on spring training on Exactly. Madison, right? That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's starting to get fun. And have fun <laughs> with it. And who knows? I, I don't know if Maryland's going to be cutting down any nets, but uh, I think that – when you look at where they stand right now in a conference that is really well respected around the country, I mean, like I said, these bracketologists are saying 10, 11 Big Ten teams are going to get in the tournament. I mean, that, so, so that tells you that they think uh, that, that outsiders really believe and buy into the quality of this conference. And, well, Maryland's at the top of it. So, uh, from that standpoint, uh, it's okay to start believing and start having some fun with this team because uh, I know Saturday, as frustrating as the middle portion of that game was, uh, they, they certainly finished uh, with a bang and give Anthony Cowan a lot of credit in, in that regard. Luke Jones can be found. Baltimore Luke out on Twitter and Luke at WNST.net. I got to say about Royal Farms because we're introducing the all-new Texas Toast Grilled Cheese Sandwich and the delicious creamy tomato soup combo. Get on over to Royal Farms. Check that out. I got my Royal Farms coffee cup here. I got my Liberty Pure Solutions water here. You can learn more at acleanwater.com. We're going to get Doug around here. Matt Stover and I are going to be talking water as well. I even have some investments from my friends at Raskin Global as well. But Baltimore Positive is rocking this week. Mary Miller, Mary Washington. If you want to hear from TJ Smith, Theroux Vignaraj, you want to hear from Brandon Scott, you want to hear from Jack Young, they're all up there. We're working on a forum in April as well here at Baltimore Positive. Big shout out to our friends at Fadley's who are expanding over to Catonsville from Lexington Market. And Lexington Market's under uh, uh, new construction right now, which is really cool. We had some crab cakes down there. We'll be back there again next week as well. Find our whole Baltimore Positive schedule, including Ted Venetoulas coming up, Stuart Pittman coming up for those of you in Anne Arundel County, Barry Glassman coming up for those of you in Hartford County. Uh, I, there's a rumor that Sheila Dixon's going to appear on Baltimore Positive sometime soon, so hang out for that. All of it brought to you by our friends at Cole Roofing, sponsor of our Community and Charity Series. 100 years. Don't let it goof on your roof. You have a corporate huge workspace or a business workspace on the roof, let Cole Roofing teach you how you can turn that into even more dough with uh, the Gordian plan. Get, 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 get yourself some, uh, some money on the roof. Let Bill Cole teach you how to do that. Learn more at Cole Roofing and Gordian as well. Planet Fitness, $5 down, 10 bucks a month, no commitment, and always sponsoring our WNST morning newspaper. Make sure you subscribe to that, as well as our WNST tech service, all brought to you by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard, Tony Jefferson Cut, James Hurst Cut. Doing plenty of Terps around here. We're going to get, I, I have plenty on my mind in regard to baseball and the Orioles um, now that we've, uh, We've broken from my winter swoon, and I'm back in the cockpit around here. So make sure you're checking that out. TheBuyAToyota.com, Audio Vault there, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, concerts, fun, conversations, saving Baltimore. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, and WNST Taos in Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore sports and Maryland basketball.